Okay, with this lesson, we're going to look at surface friction, and uh, we're going to use the surface analysis tutorial to kind of walk through some basic steps you want to consider as you're designing your dragster. Um, hopefully, at this point, you have completed the uh, knowledge work uh, over here with uh, friction force and the friction force worksheet um, and drag force and the drag force quiz. Uh, this information here is is very good critical uh, science-based information that's going to help improve uh, the design of your dragster. So looking at the tutorial itself, um, we're going to uh, open up uh, the analysis section um, at the engine on the engineering uh, area over here. And um, in the analysis section, we're going to look at several uh, several things. Let me first uh, put away some of these. Okay, so we're going to look at the uh, analysis section of the engineering tab. So make sure you open up the engineering tab. Uh, the analysis section is down here in the bottom. A couple things I'll, I'm going to put away for right now. We'll, we'll put away the, um, the mass piece. I'm going to open the refined uh, solid up just so we can look at that. All right, so under the analysis section, select surface friction. Um, view the 3D image of the surface analysis of your display. Let's take a look at surface friction. Click on that little eye right there, and you see your car now has become virtual. I'm leaving the wheels on there. Later on in here, they do have you bring the wheels up. And uh, here's a graph of the four principal areas that we see friction in our car. Okay, the um, rear axle and, and rear bearing are going to uh, get most of it. Remember, our center of mass is pretty close to that axle, which means most of the uh, friction is on that back axle. Uh, there's always going to be a friction distribution between the two axles, but a lot of that is based on uh, where is the distribution of, of weight. And so your rear axle is taking most of the weight because of where the center of mass is in, in your design here. And when, so we see that in this graph chart um, right here. There's a little friction um, on the wheels themselves where they uh, surface friction where they contact uh, the ground. There is a uh, wheel uh, bearing friction where we're looking at the uh, axle moving through uh, the wheel bearing or the, the tube uh, slide there. And you see that on both of our axles, both our front axles and our back axles. Um, so there are four principal forces of friction that we want to consider in design. So as you recall from your research, uh, Newton's laws of motion, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The reaction forces are indicated with these uh, little arrows right here. Uh, so this is the reaction force to the friction forces that are um, working against our car um, where they push down on the ground, for example, is weight, the reaction uh, force opposing, uh, opposing that. So we see those um, there. We can look at those as values um, by um, clicking on the uh, wrench for surface friction. So when we pull this wrench up over here, here are the values of each of the uh, reaction forces, and uh, they're explained here um, in this chart and as we go down a little bit further through here. Okay, so when you look at the table here, uh, we've broken out each of the areas where we're seeing friction. And you have the re reaction force, the friction coefficient, and the overall friction. Remember, the product of the reaction um, force and the uh, coefficient uh, of, of friction is your overall friction on the vehicle. And uh, <clears throat> this reaction force is generated by the percent of mass uh, pushing down, in, in this case, the front wheels or the rear wheels as we distribute mass over the uh, supports of the vehicle itself. Collectively, each of these uh, reaction forces make up the total reaction force on the uh, vehicle itself. And it, it's not complete, but uh, pretty much the total friction um, of the vehicle is based on the friction uh, from each of these four sections here. When you look over here in the tutorial itself, they're just asking you to look for and, and find the appropriate uh, values and to input them in here. So if we look, where's the reaction force on our front wheels? Come over here to front wheels. Here's our reaction force, 0.1278. So in your uh, challenge type, 0.1278. And on the rear wheels, 
you look at that reaction force, uh, you have 0 0.7026. So you type that in, 0 0.7026. Now you see distribution of weight. Our center of mass is principally close to the back of the car. Uh, so there is a much greater reaction force on the rear wheels than there are on the front wheels. Our total reaction force, if you um, look at it in, in totality, is the addition of these two forces together. So you pull your calculator up and you, you'd add these up. And I pull this out here and uh, we type that in 0. 0.1278 uh, plus uh, 0.7026. And that gives us 0. 0.8304 as our total reaction force, 0. 0.8304. Um, you can verify that uh, with your mass analysis, you can go back through and work through the calculations uh, that uh, you did in the friction section of the uh, tutorial. So some design considerations in regards to uh, surface friction. This section here takes you through some things you want to think about. Um, total mass, total cost, and total friction uh, are factors that um, change as we change the materials uh, that are, are uh, used in our design here. And we can uh, you know, find each of these numbers. Um, total mass is in the mass analysis tool, which is this guy right here. Um, the uh, total cost uh, design specification report uh, is on our output section uh, where we print that out. And, um, and that will give us the total cost for our vehicle. And the total friction uh, is in the surface friction uh, report, which is, is this right here. And so here they're walking you through um, some different changes. What would happen to those values uh, if you changed your rear axle material to brass, for example? Um, brass is going to raise your cost um, significantly. Um, what's going to happen to your your friction values um, when you you make those changes? Uh, you'll you'll probably see depending what axle you have in there right now. If it's a steel axle and you go to a brass axle you're actually going to reduce your friction values. So there's a lot you can do to improve uh, and enhance the performance of your car. And this little worksheet here just takes you through some of those changes so you can see um, what's going on um, when you change those materials in the design. Remember, ultimately, you want to be the fastest car on the track. Um, ideally, you want to be the least expensive uh, and, and the fastest, but you're going to find that uh, there might be a trade-off for something with a low coefficient of friction. You may be paying more money for that uh, particular material. So you uh, make the decisions. You figure out what's best for your car, your design. And um, I can't wait to see what you produce. Uh, hope you are the fastest in the class uh, within the design specifications. Good luck with that.